So today's project is this big cast iron. I'm told this is like a differential cover or something off of a 1960s or possibly early 70s Corvette. Never welded anything quite like it before, but it doesn't look like anything too out of the ordinary. It just requires a little bit of cast iron action. The slug is sheared off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the forge lit up and then we're gonna get to work on beveling this and Ving it out so our weld actually has something to tie into inside the material. Then we'll throw it on the forge, let it warm up, pull it off, and uh, get to welding it. So yeah, now I'll be able to say I welded something that was at one point on a Corvette. And it's it, these these pieces are actually surprisingly expensive. You know, the guy showed up with this thing. I told him, you know, what I charged to weld it, and I expected him to turn me down because you know you look at a rear differential cover and you think that's something you can buy at a junkyard for twenty bucks or thirty bucks or something. But this one's actually almost three hundred dollars to replace, so it's uh, it's still a little cheaper than than doing that. So all right, let's uh, fire up the forge and take it from there. Fits up real nice. You can see now that we've beveled this out and veed it out, uh, our weld actually has something to tie into. It won't just be resting on the surface. And now, I guess it's time to toss it on the forge. One final note I'll make though, is that there's a bolt hole in this. I'm actually gonna toss this bolt back in said bolt hole so that way, you know, it's a lot less likely that we'll get sparks and spatter and whatnot inside the threads. Turn on the turbo boost here. Alright, so I'm very happy to announce that this thing has had, I don't know, a little while to cool now. It's almost completely cooled down. It needs a little bit longer. It's not like ambient temperature yet, but it's really close. And I believe this if this was going to crack, it would have yet, and it, uh, and it hasn't. So, looking at this, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm going to let this cool, hopefully overnight, and the gentleman can come pick it up. And, uh, yeah, there's not any cracks in there. It looks like the welds tied in really well. You know, cast iron, it's one of those things where, in my experience, and I've, I'm, I don't claim to be an expert at it, but I've probably welded, I don't know, 15, 20 different cast iron repairs, and then probably an equal amount of aluminum, just about. And... You know, when I got into welding, I heard from all sorts of people that are like, oh, you know, it's so difficult, it cracks and it fails half the time, and so on and so forth. And um, it, it, if you follow some really basic instructions, you preheat, you use the right electrode, you peen your welds here like we did with the, uh, with the air hammer. Uh, you know, you do that and you let it cool slowly, in this case on a forge, but I've also like buried things in sand which insulates it and makes it cool a lot slower. It's really just not that hard, it's just some steps you have to follow. It's like baking something, you know, if you, if you just follow the steps it normally works just fine. So let that be hopefully a little inspirational thing for you. If anybody's, you know, got something cast iron, my advice is don't be afraid to weld it because if you follow the steps it'll probably work just fine. So. Really happy with how this turned out. Now I get to tell people I've welded on Corvette parts, which is kind of cool. And this was a fun little video to put together for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, don't forget to rate and subscribe for more. Have a nice night.